So at any one time, by looking at our dashboard of risk indicators, whether it's the board or the EXCO or the ALCO, the Asset Liability Committee, we can see our current position. Ideally, we'll have some sort of forecast position as well. We'll have some stressed position. So we'll get a good understanding, a good idea of what, um, what the bank's exposure is to risk all the risk types today, and the balance sheet exposure is, and what it might likely to be in the near term future. And that third bullet point in brown is where the risk indicators come in helpful. They should ideally give us some awareness of any potential breaches of risk appetite uh, because we're in a certain, you know, in the yellow or the amber zone, and we can take action to, to mitigate that. Now, here's the, the calibration point about the red, amber, green. So we've, we're all familiar with that, setting red, amber, green for each of the indicators. So, you know, and the green is where we want to be. And ordinarily, it would, if it went to amber, it's showing it's getting a bit uh, outside our, happy, our appetite. And then if it's red, we need to take action to fix it. We've broken our limits. Now, what I've been taken to doing the last two or three years is inserting another color between green and amber, which is yellow. So I don't have a RAG status anymore. I've got a RAG status, red, amber, yellow, green. And the point of that is basically, it's simply to allow management time to take action. That's all. Uh, when it's in green, everything is business as usual. You're managing the balance sheet. If it goes into yellow, there's no escalation necessary. You don't have to inform the board or the regulator or anyone like that. You just take action to restore back to green. So in other words, it's giving you time to take action. Whereas if it goes straight from green to amber, it's only one step then to red and you're informing the regulator and the board and your escalation process may not have sufficient time to restore back to green. That's why I think it's worth having this fourth color in. Now, triggering action. What we, the reason we set calibrated levels is so that if they go above, outside our green zone, above a particular limit or below a particular limit, we can take action. And the action we need to take is whatever needs to be done to restore that indicator back to green. And if it doesn't restore out back to green, either quickly or if it's in yellow and it goes beyond yellow, we need to escalate, which is why we want to have a formal escalation process. And again, in the UK, the regulator likes to see this written down. I've got a chart there. There you go, slide 31. It's quite a busy chart there. Have a look at it in detail in your own time. Um, that's a summary. And what slide 31 is basically saying is, here is what we will do if an indicator goes outside of green. It's the escalation progress, a uh, process, escalation process. So if you look at the top left, uh, I've got the green indicator, business as usual, the governance is ALCO, or it could be the EXCO. I'm talking specifically about balance sheet uh, or ALM indicators, so I've put ALCO, but it could be EXCO. I mean, if it was reputational risk or, or strategic risk or conduct risk, it wouldn't be ALCO there. So you've got ALCO or EXCO there, and you know everything is operating as normal, everything is fine. You read down that column. If, any, if one or more indicators goes into yellow, it's still ALCO, but we need to take action to restore back to green. Only if it goes beyond that into amber do we start escalating. If you look at the top row there, or the second row, it says board. The governance is no longer the board, sorry, ALCO. It's the board or a board risk subcommittee. So we've, subcommittee. So we've escalated it. And then if it goes into red, we've escalated it still further, at which point we're, it, we're also informing the regulator. Now, I've put this little column between the amber and the red, the sort of pink sort of color. That's basically if a tier two indicator goes into red. But you can ignore that if you don't have tiering in your indicators. OK, so that's the escalation process. Now we get to the quantitative part, the business end of the risk appetite framework, and that is the risk appetite statement. And that is basically the qualitative and quantitative description of the bank's risk appetite. The quantitative one is descriptive. It's the type of thing you'll see on a bank's website. The quantitative one takes each key risk indicator and puts limits against them and also escalation triggers against them. So here's the qualitative version. Here's one I authored myself. And um, that's a qualitative one. Fairly straightforward. Strategic objectives, target credit rating, risk appetite. The quantitative one is where the real business end comes in, where, uh, and I'm going to just quickly fast forward to that. The quantitative one takes each risk type, strategic risk, capital risk, credit risk, assigns the key risk indicators, puts in the calibration, and then on a monthly basis or a weekly, daily or a weekly and monthly basis, reports the actual number in the color code that the number represents. Okay, so that's the risk appetite statement. 